Um, hi everyone, thanks for um, watching my video. Today I'm going to talk about um, flow cytometry method for characterizing platelet activation. Um, so just to give you a little background on this topic, um, my colleagues and I, we work for American Preclinical Services, which is a preclinical CRO, and we do preclinical um, device, medical device testing. And um, one area of that that's really important, as you may or may, or may not know, is um, biocompatibility testing. And obviously for blood contacting devices, um, hemocompatibility is an important um, subsection of that. Um, so currently, um, uh, the standard sort of hemocompatibility testing involves you know, checking for homolysis, checking for um, platelet, uh, will they do a, a platelet count check. Um, as well as like promise formation um, and that kind of thing. And we just wanted to sort of add to the available options out there for um, seeing a device's interaction with blood. And so we wanted to look into uh, a nice test for platelet activation. Um, currently, there are tests for platelet activation that require um, specialized equipment. And um, what we sort of have tried to do is develop a, a a test that can use a flow cytometer, which you know a higher percentage of labs have access to. Um, so I'll take you through what we did. Um, so yeah, basically this is a method to develop um, or to, to measure platelet activation prior to the formation of a thrombus, which would hopefully give a device manufacturer more information about you know if their device was causing platelet activation or thrombus formation. Um, they might get more information about the kinetics of that. Um, Traditional methods, like I said, use light conductance. This requires specialized equipment. And so the advantages of our method would be to use um, a, a more generalized piece of equipment and to get some quantitative information about percentage of activated platelets. Um, so the basis of the assay is to detect um, the product of alpha granule secretion. Um, when platelets get activated, they might secrete alpha granules. This causes uh, surface expression of a molecule called p-selectin and basically the basis of our flow cytometry approach is to detect p-selectin on the surface. Um, this is the basic steps of the procedure. Uh, we use fresh human blood from a donor. Um, we collect in sodium citrate tubes which is what we found to be the best. We process this blood to platelet-rich plasma using a slow centrifugation with a uh, a very gentle deceleration. This forms like a, a layer of rich, a platelet rich plasma just above the interface with the red blood cells. Um, from there, we remove that plasma. We add it to our articles. So these are, in our case, we're using some reference materials just to test how this um, assay works. But in a, in a real test, this would be the medical device that's been prepared. Uh, we incubate it with antibodies, and then we analyze that on the flow cytometer. Um, so this is some example data of how it looks coming off of the flow cytometer. We first do an isolation of a pure population of cells. Um, that's kind of what this is depicting in the upper left corner. From there, um, these axes represent expression of a platelet marker as well as p-selectin on the y-axis. Um, so the further along the y-axis it is, the more positive it is for p-selectin, therefore the more activated it is. And you can see that depicted as a histogram in the lower right corner. So we draw a gate um, to determine the percentage of activated cells. Here's just some summary information about the data collection that we've done. Um, we performed this test with some reference materials to try to identify some positive and negative controls that could be used in a real assay. Um, and so here we see that using HDP, high density polyethylene, gives a similar um, results to using just a blank tube with nothing in it. And similarly, latex and black rubber are sort of robust materials that give a positive uh, response between 60 and 80 percent activated platelets. Meanwhile, we use a chemical agonist, uh, ADP, adenosine diphosphate nucleotide, which gives nearly 100 percent activation of platelets. Um, we also measured the selection of anticoagulant, um, the effect of anticoagulant selection on this test. Um, and we compared citrate, which are these uh, gray bars, to heparin on uh, the black bars. And we basically see that for black rubber, which we ended up selecting as our go-to positive control, um, citrate provides a much higher uh, level of activation above baseline. Uh, 
And lastly, we um, measure the effect of multiple donors on this. Um, common thing for hemocompatibility tests is to use more than one donor just to account for uh, single donor you know, uh, variations in that specific person's blood. And we see that uh, with these light gray bars, the pooled blood really does give a similar response to each individual donor, um, suggesting that combining uh, blood from three donors is appropriate for this test. Um, so this is high level conclusions here. We use platelet rich plasma. This gave us a better data than just using whole blood. Um, black rubber and high density polyethylene are sort of robust positive and negative controls respectively. Um, both citrated and heparinized blood seem to produce um, activation, but citrated blood gave a better level of activation above uh, baseline level. And finally, pooling of blood from multiple donors um, didn't really alter the results or introduce significant variation. Um, so thanks again for listening to my video. Um, if you want more information, uh, I encourage you to read the paper that we published. It goes into a lot more depth. And um, thanks again for watching.